Hello again. Uh, the plot is, here's an example. Uh, Charlie Bucket is very poor. Willy Wonka has a chocolate factory. The factory closed 15 years ago. There are five golden tickets inside Wonka chocolate bars. If you win a golden ticket, you can visit the factory. Augustus Bloop, Marika Salt, Violet Fairy Gas, and Mike Tindy win a ticket. Then Charlie wins a ticket. Children get the chocolate factory with their Augustus fall into the chocolate lake. You may know this story. This is uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, this is just an example of a plot. So the plot is the is the bare, the basic story, the simple version of the story. And um, in really simple terms, um, a story is also called narrative, and a story basically has four parts. Um, sometimes only three parts, orientation, complication, resolution, and reorientation. So um, in orientation, we find out where are we, um, who is the main character. Often we also get an idea of what kind of story is this. And we may have an idea of what the themes of the story are. So it tells us who is the main character, where is it, when is it, and what's, what's it about. Um, then there's some kind of complication, some kind of problem happens. Uh, then there's a resolution. The problem is somehow solved or resolved. And at the end, sometimes we have a reorientation. So through the story, uh, the characters and the world has changed. And we have a brief glimpse of how the new world is. Uh, this is what's called an implicit structure. So in a story, the structure is hidden. It doesn't tell us where the orientation is. It doesn't tell us what the complication is. It doesn't tell us the resolution. Uh, the the structure is hidden inside the story. The structure is there, and a good story has a good structure. Uh, if you're writing a research paper, if you're doing academic writing or technical writing, uh, a common research paper structure is uh, introduction, method, results, discussion, conclusion. If you're working in sciences, this is the kind of paper that you'll write. Um, this structure is uh, what's called explicit. So in the case of this kind of paper, the structure is not hidden. Uh, for example, here's, a, uh, here's an example of a paper, and you can see it tells you this is the introduction. It has a title and shows you what each part is. Um, stories don't really do this. The structure is, is hidden inside. Uh, this is another example. This is a, um, a uh, piece of writing, not a story. Um, I wrote something about machine translation. Uh, you can read it later. And when I was writing it, I came up with lots of different ideas. Um, history, accuracy grammatical rules, code breaking, computers, strange language, technology, technical manuals, methods, corpus linguistics, mistranslation. Translation is difficult. Um, the future, Russian, English, uses, reading, writing, science fiction, statistical models, progress, challenges, weather forecast, ambiguity, writing letters, surfing the internet, um, and we can take all these ideas when we're doing when we're writing and put them into kind of groups. So here's one broad topic area. Uh, here's another topic area, challenges. And here's another topic area, methods, different methods of machine translation. And um, this is uh, progress. And here are some uses. So we can look at um, we can look at these. Uh, we're left over with some ideas. When you're writing, there are usually some ideas left over. Sometimes you can use them for the introduction, for the conclusion. Sometimes they may be used writing something else. Um, so here's a rough plan. This is um, writing about machine translation. Uh, rough plan is seven parts, introduction, history, challenges, methods, progress, 
uses and conclusion. Uh, here's a more detailed plan uh, where you can see each, each these are going to be paragraphs, and each paragraph has different, different ideas in it. Um, when you're outlining, there are different ways that you can organize your system for outlining. You can use a number system, so 1, 2.1, 2.2.1. 2.2.1 and so on. Another way is um, using Roman numbers, then capital letters, then Arabic numerals, and then lowercase numbers. There are different ways of different systems for organizing a piece of writing. If you're writing a story, these are not so important. If you're writing a story, we have a plot. Uh, the plot has some um, different parts. So in the case of Charlie, this is kind of the orientation. Um, the complication comes next. They all get tickets. Uh, there's a, a conflict between Charlie and the other children. And the rest of the story is the resolution. Uh, they don't have to be fixed sizes. Uh, the complication can be quite short. The resolution can be long. The orientation can be as long as it needs to be. Um, so to make a story, and a very simple way of making a story, um, put someone up a tree, throw stones at them, and then get them down. So here we have our orientation at the beginning. Someone is in a tree. A complication, we're throwing stones at them, we make their life difficult, and then we get them down. Um, this is uh, sometimes also called the story arc. Uh, this is an example of um, the, the last Harry Potter story where this is looking at kind of Harry's fortunes. So things are getting a little bit better at the beginning, then they get much worse, then they get much better, then they get worse, then they get a little bit better, then they get worse, then a little bit better, then a little bit worse. So it's going up and down kind of like a roller coaster. Um, so what is the plot then? What I'd like you to do for homework is think of a... a a movie that you've seen maybe or a, a book that you've read um, if possible something you've seen in English if possible a book that you've read in English and um, please write the title and then try to work out what is the story what's the basic plot and try to think in terms of orientation complication resolution and reorientation so think about who who the characters where are they Tell us about the orientation. What is the complication? What What's the problem in the book? What happens in the story? And uh, how does the resolution work? Um, and you can use, as I said, a movie that you know, a story that you read recently. If you want to, the story, maybe you're reading a story now. What are you, um, what are you reading now? Um, and when you... When you're writing a story, when you're doing, when you're writing anything, having a good plan is very helpful. What a good plan means is it means it's easier to write because when you're writing, uh, you can concentrate on choosing the best words, choosing the best language, and making your language beautiful. Um, you don't need to worry about where you're going. You have a rough idea of where you're going. You don't need to worry so much about the content because the content is in your plan. Um, unless you want to. Of course, when you're writing, you can think about new ideas. You can always change your plan. You can always change the plot. But it's a better idea to start off with one. Um, so for your story then, um, for homework, I'd like you to think about a story that you've read, a movie that you've seen, and write down the plot for that. Over the next week or two, I'd like you to think about your story. And um, you need to know these questions. You need to know what kind of story you're writing. You need to know when it's set. You need to know where it's set. You need to know who your main character is. You need to know what your story is about. And very importantly, you need to know the plot. And you need a good plot. Good stories have good plots. Um, you at some point will need to know the name of your story. Uh, that's when you're writing, that's a detail. And we'll talk about stories and their names 
another day. Different writers have looked at different stories and, and come up with types of stories. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut, who was a, an American science fiction writer, um, he came up with six different types of stories. And in fact, he, when he was a, a university student, he, he wrote this as his, his thesis and it was rejected. They didn't like his idea. Uh, more recently, um, several thousand stories have been put into a computer and they've analysed them to find out what kind of stories they are. And they almost all follow one of these six types of stories. So we have rags to riches, riches to rags, Icarus, Oedipus, Cinderella, and a man in a hole. So um, rags to riches, basically things just get better throughout the story. Uh, riches to rags, things just get worse throughout the story. Um, Icarus, you may know from Greek myth, um, he put feathers on his arms and tried to fly to the sun and the wax melted and he fell down again. So this is a story that gets better and then gets worse. Um, Oedipus story, another Greek character, uh, things get worse, then they get better, then they get worse again. Uh, the Cinderella story is the opposite of this. So things get better at the beginning, then they get worse, and then they get better again. And finally, um, a man in a hole, it doesn't need to be a man, it doesn't need to be a hole, but basically things get worse at the beginning, and then they get better again. Um, so these are, these are types of stories to think about. Um, you need to think with your plot in some something some of these kinds of stories. Um, another writer has said there are seven different basic plots, and these are similar. Um, these are similar to what Kurt Vonnegut talked about, overcoming the monster. Um, for example, Dracula is an example of this kind of story. Star Wars is also a monster thing to overcome. Um, Rags to Riches, The Quest. Voyage and Return, Comedy, Tragedy, and Rebirth. So there's, that's someone else's idea of seven basic plots. Um, the parts of a plot, uh, one part is sometimes called a call. This is when the hero in the story is sent, is given a, a calling, is told what to do, what he needs to do, what she needs to do. Um, often stories have a turning point where things go from good to bad or from bad to worse, often. And a plot needs a goal. So somewhere in the plot, there's a goal where the hero or the heroine is trying to go, is trying to get to. Um, important elements and agents in a story. Um, often stories are in terms of good and bad, I mean, good versus bad. Usually good is the winner and bad is the loser. Um, there's also, importantly, a hero, a heroine, um, also called a protagonist. The protagonist is the main character in the story. And there's also often a rival or a villain or an antagonist. So the antagonist is fighting against the protagonist. Um, these are elements that stories usually have. And that's all. So good luck. Think about a story that you know, please write down the plot, and also start thinking about the plot for your story. Good luck.